Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at image assets and how to use them in Xcode. We'll look at the asset catalog and how you can use either individual or single scale assets and take advantage of using PDF images to preserve vector data and get better scaling. We'll also investigate the different rendering modes and learn how we can apply different images or colors based on whether the device is in light or dark mode. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. Let's take a look at this starter project. To keep the coding down to a minimum, I've created a starter project using Swift UI. You can download it from the link provided in the notes below. If you're not yet using Swift UI, don't be concerned. This video has really nothing to do with Swift UI, and what you'll learn will apply to UIKit as well. What I like about Swift UI, however, is that you can get immediate feedback from the preview canvas and don't have to worry about using storyboards or constraints. Let me start the preview and explain what's going on. First of all, you'll notice that my preview is showing both a light and dark preview because we want to make sure that all of our apps moving forward look good in both light and dark mode. And this will include all of our image assets. You can accomplish this by editing the preview provider to use both color schemes. Instead of images, right now I'm using an SF symbol for all of my images. This will change shortly. Let me go to live preview mode right now and show you what this application does. When I adjust the slider, the images or symbols scale accordingly. The tap me button does nothing, but the navigation bar will push a new view onto the stack. And this view has four different colored tortoises. If I switch to dark mode in live preview, I get the same thing, only in dark. That's all. The code's not important. What is important is recognizing why we can get different appearances and colors depending on the interface style, whether it be light or dark. Okay, enough of the preamble. Let's get started. With the starter project, you'll see that we have a number of images. Some are PDF and others are PNG images. We're going to start this off by loading some of our assets and I'll explain the differences and show you why I prefer PDF images over PNG images. I use Sketch to create my image assets and there may very well be other applications that allow you to create and export your images as PNG or PDF vector images, but I find Sketch is a fantastic tool and I can export in a variety of formats and sizes for each asset. So let's open our asset folder and I want you to drag only the six book images into the assets catalog. This second set applied to our second view and we'll look at them shortly. If an image doesn't have a at 2x or at 3x suffix, they get dropped into the 1x slot as you see the PDF versions do. The PNG images with at 2x and 3x get placed in the corresponding slots, which is good. So why PDF and why PNG? If you know in advance the point size of the image you'll display, for example, a button or a toolbar icon, then put it in the asset catalog as a 2x or 3x PNG image. Unless you have the need to support very old versions of iOS devices, there is no need to include a 1x version. If you know the image will be displayed at sizes that are calculated at runtime, then put the image in the asset catalog as a PDF. There's a caveat here that I'll get to in a second. If you know in advance that the image will be displayed in one of a fixed set of sizes, it's pretty much a wash which of the two you wish to use. PNG is probably smaller, but you'll need to supply one set for each size. I prefer using PDF myself for all of my assets. If you add a 1x resolution PDF image to the asset catalog, choose single scale and Xcode supplies the 2x and 3x images at build time. The problem with using PDF images prior to Xcode 9 was that it created the scaled images at build time and there was no support for using scalable images at runtime. Well, that's changed. In order to facilitate this, you do two things. Open the right side panel and the expector, and for each of the PDF assets, choose single scale from the scale selection, and also click on preserve vector data. This means the image can smoothly scale to arbitrary sizes. Let's go back to our content view now and make some changes to our code to replace the SF symbols with real images. 
we have six changes to make. I have a convenience function called sample image, and I'm going to change the system name to just name so we no longer get SF symbols. Now the function takes a string and then returns a resizable image that is scaled to fit the width that is specified by the slider. So in these four places, let's replace the name with the images that we want to use. The first is books 115 PNG, and the second books 115 PDF. In the second set, we'll use the corresponding books 40 images. The other two items are images used on the navigation bar and in buttons, so I'm going to use the smaller 40-point image for both, and I'll use the PDF image. You can see it looks pretty good in both light and dark mode, but our two button images are blue, and we'll get back to that shortly. Let's go into Live Preview now and use our slider to change the size of the images. Though it may not be too evident here, it most certainly would if I ran this on a real device. The PNG images don't scale well at all, whereas the PDF images do a much better job, particularly with the larger size PDF vector image. So what about those button images? Why are they not being displayed in full color? It's because images used in buttons, the navigation bar, and tab bar use template images. A template image is a monochrome image using the tint color, or the accent color in SwiftUI. Any solid areas are rendered solid, while transparent areas are rendered the background color. Only the alpha channel of an image is used for the color, so our image uses the default tint or accent color, which is blue. Well, blue's not my color, so we can choose to change that. In UIKit, this is called the tint color. In Swift UI, as I mentioned, it's known as the accent color. So as I said, this isn't a lesson in coding, so you'll have to do some research on various ways of changing the tint or accent color of your app. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to apply the accent color modifier to the navigation view itself. The modifier accepts a color view. So let me take care of the light mode by making our accent color black. Now I know I could have used just color.black, but bear with me. If we want to experiment with more colors, we'll need to use this format so that we can easily switch. Well, it looks good in light mode, but the buttons are lost in dark mode. Black on black is not user friendly. To handle the different modes, you should either use one of Apple's built-in semantic colors that automatically change for the different modes, or create your own semantic color. For example, I know that labels are black in light mode and white in dark mode. I can use this knowledge here to change my accent color to use the same semantic color. This works, we see our buttons are black in light mode and white in dark mode, but that's pretty boring. Let's try out other semantic colors. I recommend that you check out this page in the Human Interfaces Guideline on Apple's site. I'll leave a link to this page in the notes below. There are system colors, and you can see here that the colors change slightly between light and dark mode. And there are shades of gray, and the dynamic system colors, where I got the dot label color from. Let's try system purple. Okay, not bad. What if I want to use a completely different color for light mode versus dark mode. This is easy. We can create our own color asset. So let's do that. Back in the assets folder, I'll click on the plus button and choose new color set. I'm going to call it accent color. Currently there is only a white universal color. If we bring up our color set inspector, we can choose a color based on appearance. And you can choose any dark or any light dark. For all intents and purposes, unless you want to design a completely different color system for devices that don't support iOS 13, choose any dark. The color set for any will be used for all devices running iOS 12 or earlier, and all devices running iOS 13 or later in light mode. The dark mode applies only to devices running iOS 13 or later running in dark mode. So let's pick two different colors. 
For any light mode, I'll choose a color with this hex value. And for dark mode, let's start with this and I'll bring up my color panel and lighten it up a bit. Back in Content View, we can now use our accent color and make sure that we explicitly unwrap it with an exclamation mark. You can see the difference between light and dark mode. All right, let's move on to the second view. In this view, we have four tortoises of different color. These are SF symbols, and I use the convenience function to assign a different color as a foreground color for each of the four symbols. What I want to do now is replace the tortoise with my own image. Returning to the asset catalog and to my sample images folder, let's add grapes.pdf. And since it's a PDF image, we'll choose preserve vector data and scale as single scale. Back in second view, I can edit sample image 2 to return just the image and not the symbol by removing the system name. And then in our H stacks, change tortoise.fill to grapes. Our images all change, but what happened to our colors? Well, foreground colors don't apply to non-template images. These are not images in a button or a navigation bar or a tab bar. Well, we can fix that. We can return to our asset catalog and our grapes asset and choose render as template image. Returning now to our second view, our grapes have been changed to monochrome images and the colors have been applied. The only problem with this is that the grapes images will forever be rendered as a monochrome image when I might want to have the full color image sometime. So let's go back to the asset catalog and change it back to the default or the original image and return to our second view. Whether you are in UIKit or Swift UI, you can choose how you want individual images to be rendered in code. And let's do that by applying this modifier to our function that returns the image view. We simply say rendering mode is dot template. There you go. I can now use original images elsewhere. Now there's one last thing I want to do. I want to add a background to this view, and that background I want to be an image. You may not have noticed, but currently this view has a Z stack or a Z stack that assigns a color of system background to the view. This is redundant as that is what the background is by default. I added it here because I just want to be able to change it to an image. So let's return to our asset folder and add the vineyard image. It's another PDF, so preserve vector data and single scale. Returning now to second view, let's change this color that serves as a background to an image, and that image will be vineyard. And we want it resizable, scale to fill, and it ignores all safe area restraints, so it fills the screen. Unfortunately, this doesn't display in the preview canvas unless we enter live preview mode. So let's do it for light mode. Looks good. Now let's try dark mode. It looks the same. Shouldn't we have a background image that is more appropriate for dark mode? Sure, it's easy to fix. I provided an image for my vineyard that is more suitable to dark mode. Let's switch back to the asset catalog and, like with our color asset, choose appearance, any, comma, dark, and add our vineyard 2 image to the dark appearance. Now let's switch back to the second view now and check it out. I can go into light mode preview right away and we still see our background of the vineyard, but I also discovered that if I go back to the preview provider code, I can just comment out the light color scheme and it will switch to dark mode right away. Now that's pretty cool. You can see our dark image vineyard is showing up in dark mode. Well, that's basically it. If we return to content view and go into live mode now, 
we can switch to our second view via the navigation link. Notice how the accent color has carried through to this view as well. And I can also use that trick to switch to dark mode and see the accent color change and the background as well. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll continue to build out similar tutorials for Swift developers who have left the starting gate but still need to add to their toolbox. You can check out my YouTube channel to see what other videos I've created. Visit my website to see my iOS app portfolio of apps currently on the App Store. And check out my GitHub repository to see what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching. I'm most active on Twitter, so follow me there for notifications of other Swift-related things that I'm up to.